Okay, now I was talking about how can we solve that you know race condition problem. Okay, so we have different mechanisms. For example, we can use log and Raylan. We were talking about semaphore, and even they may have different um, you know like software solutions like Peterson solutions. Okay, Peterson solutions. So um, this is just a general way of how to use the uh, you know log. So if you have a log here, right? Okay, and uh, um, usually this is the critical section. For example, in our previous example, uh, when we you know trying to set up name, so the set up name, the logic, you know those statements inside the method, these are critical sections. Okay, so um, when we use a log, it means only one process, one thread can get in. So this is uh, you know the the way. Uh, can you know how can we make the race condition um, or sol solve the race condition? So in Java, usually it's you know synchronized, right? The keyword is synchronized, and then we will have a lock, okay? Lock. So lock is actually an object, okay? Object. So um, if we have a lock before a thread or process get into critical section, and then unlock when you finish, then this will make sure there's only one process can get in. Okay, only one process or only one thread can get in. Okay, so of course you, we cannot still you, you, we can also use a log for synchronization, but you know we will not cover here because you, when you use, use a simple form, we have a better solution. Okay, better solution. Okay, there are two types of uh, for you know logs whenever we apply the logs. Sometimes um, one is good, sometimes the other one's good. And one log is uh, it's kind of object level log. So that's very common when we use, for example, when we are uh, using like synchronize keyword. If we put synchronize in the uh, you know method, right? In that method name, where we put like synchronize modify, you know, or control, whatever. Okay. Then it means you know it they were using the uh, object level lock, which is the object itself. This actually is this. So then all the methods they share the same lock. Okay. All the methods share the same lock. This is very good control on mutual exclusion and very convenient because you, you don't need to create an extra uh, you know object lock object. But the one problem is that it will uh, make you know have a performance penalty because only one thread, one process can access one of those methods. Okay, so even they don't interact with each other. But if you put them, they use the same lock. Then only one process thread can use. And once you are using Thread A is using, for example, then thread B cannot use. And if you are waiting for something released to be released by thread B, then you are waiting forever. That could create a data lock issue. Okay, data lock issue. Okay. What about a fine grained lock? So instead of just using one object level lock, and uh, you know to solve that uh, penalty problem and solve that data possible data lock problem, then we can use multiple locks. Okay, so for example, the, if the, you know thread and you know method A and method D, they uh, they're not related to each other, then we don't need to make them to use the same lock. They can use two different locks. So this way will um, make it much better. Okay, and uh, this is just showing the um, showing the um, you know the the lock defense. Okay, so we are using a what are we using? This one's like synchronized, right? Lock objects. So this is actually object level lock. Okay, object level lock. Later on, we were talking about that. And this, uh, you know, anyway, this is another, um, you know, in the in the race condition example, right? When we have first name, last name, for you know, George Watson and Link Avi, and in this set name, before we don't have any control. Now we put like synchronized. And then we use lock object, and we use this just one lock object. Okay, so this is the um, we will show. This is actually the um, you know uh, object level lock. And uh, well, we can even uh, you know if we have multiple methods like set name and uh, you know get a name, right? And uh, we can create two locks. So then they don't if we don't worry about then. You know they are not related to each other. Then we can one of them will uh, synchronize on lock one, and the other one will synchronize on lock two. So, which means 
you know, if one method to access set name, another uh, process can also access get name, even though they cannot access set name at the same time. So this will improve the performance. And uh, another uh, method is to use the semaphore. Okay, semaphore. So the semaphore, they can, um, you know, mainly they can make sure some statement run before some of other statements. Okay, so they can synchronize. Okay, synchronize like this one. You know, if we want to make sure uh, S one two run before S two one, then what we should do? So S two two. If we want to make sure the Run before S22. So then we will make sure that uh, S22 will, you know, block by, you know, blocked by the, you know, whatever waiting, right? Okay. And then uh, we will make sure S12 will uh, wake up, you know, single. So then this way, you know, S22 cannot run unless S2 finish, S12 finish and then wake up. And this, uh, you know, what we did using the semaphore, right? You can synchronize, and then you are, you know, since they still need the mutual exclusion, and then then we will use this to wait. Okay, so then you are not you you have a block here. Okay, you are waiting for somebody, and whenever you block yourself, then you give up a CPU, right? You give up a CPU. So then uh, the other, you know, threads, okay. Which is not ID is one, so then they will try to set up this and then make the lock is two, and then they will notify to wake up the you know previous one. So when you wake wake up, then it will remove from the block queue and then put it on the ready queue, and then of course it could be run, right? Okay. Of course, you know lock and the semaphore they could be. Um, you know, they each have its own um, purpose, and um, um, sometimes we don't know which one's better. You know, uh, but most of the time, if we use a single CPU, then semaphore is definitely better than lock because when we are using lock, uh, we don't block any of the thread or process. And what we do did do is to um, make sure it's just continuous check, so it will waste all the CPU cycle. Okay. With all the CPU cycle. And uh, semaphore, however, is different since they are using web. It, you know, it will block itself. So then it will immediately give up a CPU and, you know, block it, put it in the block queue, and then it will immediately give up a CPU and then later uh, thread the process to run. So this is way more efficient if it's a single CPU. But again, if it's a multiple CPU, then, uh, you know, sometimes lock is better, sometimes semaphore is better. It all depends on the length of the you know, statement, the critical section, right? Critical section. If the length of a critical section is not, is very short, it's not long, then uh, the lock is better because when we do the lock, we just wait in and then other thread will, you know, you are waiting a short time, another uh, thread process will finish and then you will resume, right? You will get whatever you want and then you will uh, continue. And um, same of all, however, is bad because, you know, um, even though you know the, the waiting time is very short, but you are trying to block yourself, then it will uh, you use a contact switch. So the contact switch it, it's involved with very complex process. Uh, first, you need to you know save your status, put it into the PCB, you know which is a process control block, and this of course is done by the kernel process. And um, then they need to you know put you into the um, block. Q, right? Block the queue. And then they needed to select somebody, you know, some other process or thread, and then they needed to, uh, you know, recover everything from the PCB to the process, and then they did run. So this entire process contact switch, and it is really not that short, okay? So it had some um, some um, penalty. So if the waiting pro if the wait critical section or the waiting time for, for the other uh, process of thread is not very long, then we'd rather to use a lock instead of a semaphore because, in, you know, context switch is longer than the critical section waiting. Okay. And we can use, you know, of course, Peter's solution six and seven, right? Okay, Peter's solution six and seven. Okay, so that's about this, you know, um, 
risk condition.